Okay, so today we're going to basically use our sketchbook and I want to get a page out of it. So one of the things I think a lot of you'll see is there's some of these actually have like a little dotted line there where you can get it to kind of fold both directions. If you can do that, it will come out less likely to rip. Now if you have one that will not rip out, then you probably need to use a pair of scissors. All right, so what we're going to do with this piece of paper is I need you to lay a ruler down and we're going to measure, actually what we're going to do is two inches over. So I'm going to lay it right here. Get my handy dandy pencil out here. Two inches. Slide it down. This ruler starts at zero, so I'm putting it on the zero and then two inches. I have my point A and my point B, and then I'm going to line it up like this on that side of the ruler, holding my hand and pulling it towards me. I always like to pull it towards me. I have more control when I pull the pencil towards me, and I'm less likely to push the, pen, the ruler off by shoving against it. So you'll notice I kept my pencil vertical. All right, so from there we're going to take and you're going to lay the ruler. We're not going to measure from here. We're just going to do it easy. I'm going to take the width of this ruler, which is a little over an inch, and I'm going to line it up with the edge of the paper, then line it up with the next line I write, or draw, line it up with the next line, and just keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are doing the Derman Ross value scale, and he used nine. What I count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that's going to leave us a little tiny sliver in my sketchbook which is basically 11 and by eight and a half sheets, which is the same as your uh, copy paper. All right, so it's gonna leave a place down here for me to put my name and probably uh, Derman Ross scale is what I'm gonna write. All right, and now what I wanna do is I wanna begin to color using my pencil. Now there's something I have figured out that if I color with the pencil, and I'm going to start with dark, if I color and I color a light value across here, the likelihood of the uh, graphite building up to the point where I can't get it to go dark is greater. For some reason I always do much better if I just take it immediately to a good hard dark. So don't mess around take this pencil as far as you can go. Now what I'm using right now is a Bic, a Bic number two or number seven uh, weight, I guess, and it's a number HB2, which is the same as a regular pencil, like this one. Paper Mate by America. And then we have one that's called a Ticonderoga, and those are pretty nice. This is also an HB2. And then I have a real fancy one here. This is an ebony, jet black, extra smooth. There's no number on this one, but it's a beauty. All right, but what I want to show you is just a regular everyday um, mechanical pencil will get you a really dark value. So you're going to start laying this color down pretty hard and heavy on here and you're going to go all the way across. What your, your whole plan is to not have any white paper show through. None. So we're going pretty hard here as I color. And notice that what I have behind my paper so it doesn't uh, damage the paper is a flat surface with no scratches or holes in it because that will damage the paper. Okay. So it does get a little sheen on it because it is 
uh, really black. All right. Well, I don't want to bore you, so we're going to go over here, and I'm going to pull my other one out, which I've been working on. And um, it is the same pencil, except I did start with one of these, this mechanical pencil, then I lost it, then played with another mechanical pencil that, did, that wasn't a Bic, and I realized that the Bic for me is actually the stronger pencil, and a lot of the damage that was done to this paper right here was done entirely from me trying to get another pencil to do what this beautiful Bic does. So this little Bic is a sweet little pencil. And so what I'm going to do is just keep going really dark and trying to get rid of all the white. And I am not trying to get cross-hatching or hatching marks in this. I want to try to keep this really smooth because we're going to later, we're going to use this as a tool. We're going to use it by laying it over the top of other things that we're working on or things that we're going to be uh, trying to draw. And we will be using it as a way of uh, judging how much or how dark an area is or how light an area is. All right, so that one's fairly dark. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to the next one. And this is all you have to do is go to the next one and begin to lay down the graphite. And I think that it does work better if you go ahead and lay it down pretty heavy. But you'll see that I am not going so heavy right here that, there we go, that I cannot, that I get it so black. What I'm trying to do is not get white in there, but still have it be kind of dark. So that's pretty nice. And then I drop back and do it and do it some more. So I'm going to add some more darkness to this next spot. I have noticed that if there's bumps on the table, and I do have a surface here, something is causing damage, uh, there's that you'll end up with a dark mark like I just had here and here. Um, you may or may not be able to see that. And what I'm trying to do is make each gradation just a little bit lighter. And if you get a dark area, you may have to go in there with your eraser which for some reason I did not bring in the room with me. It's in my other area. Okay, yeah, so if I try to erase that, I'm going to mess that up with this eraser. Uh, but I'm going to leave it alone and move on here, and then I'm going to just drop back some more, and I'm just going to go for the next value. And it is really gets kind of tough right here in the middle way to get it where it looks like they're different. They have to look different. So I am going to go in here and play. Another thing I've noticed that can change uh, the way you, uh, you, the way this lays down nicely is if you start working without washing your hands prior to working. Uh, washing your hands is going to make a big difference because we are, um, we have oils in our skin. And so if you can wash your hands, you're not going to, I think that right there is probably due to me picking up the paper at some point. And um, that's probably exactly what that one is. I'm pretty sure of it because I can't, like, I can't get it to back off. And so even with trying to erase it, we'll see if I can get that one cleaned up. But I really want the whole main area right here to be a certain value. So I may have to kind of play with a few places and keep coming back. All right, so the next value. And so here, right here, it gets tough because I'm trying to get it to go not that dark and, and not too light. So just right in between. And so I'm just laying down the graphite. And again, just a regular old mechanical pencil. And you can use, um, mechanical pencils are my favorite because I'm kind of lazy and I hate going to, um, I don't like to sharpen. <laughs> I'm just a little on the lazy side, and I uh, sometimes I'll sharpen. Uh, you can see this one's been sharpened with an actual uh, blade, and this is a big old fat Ticonderoga. I bought these for my grandkids so they could learn to write when they were little. But this the Ticonderoga is is one of the um, premier pencils, and it, it for artists because it does have a really nice graphite. Um, and so I'm going to lace into that, that, trying to keep it real light here. And it's actually getting dark. It's actually darker than my, my 
Um, that's okay. I'm just barely putting some on here. And so I'm looking for dark to light, and I want to make sure I can see a definite gradation. Now, this to me appears darker than this one. And that's simply because I took my finger. Now, again, I, I, I want to caution you to wash your hands before doing it because the oils will make a difference. But it's because I did this. I took my finger and I darkened that area. And what I was trying to do is get these two, this one stays white, this one has to go. And so what I was doing is pulling the graphite over. So grab some graphite, pull it over. But you don't want to get too much. I don't want to have to go back and lighten it up with an eraser. So I'm trying to slowly work my way up to a value that you can see there. And I see it's white and then a slight gray, but i am still got an issue with that one being too dark. So I can do a couple of things. I can take an eraser, which just magically just showed up next to me. That's awesome. Thanks assistant <laughs> and I'm going to take some of that off try anyway and it looks like I'm making a mess so this happens to all of us I wish I was perfect dadgummit all right all right that's not too bad and I think if I blend And then I try to go, I think I can get this to work. I want that one to definitely be darker than that one, but I want this one to be darker than, okay, so what I'm going to have to do is move over here. And so you just got to start playing with it until you can get them to go to the next value level. So, all right, so I'm thinking I might be winning. This one's a toughie. He's giving me a lot of trouble. Okay, so do you see what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to play and get those values. I still feel like I need more in this one. So I'm just going to put a very light. Now, as soon as I do that, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Maybe I now have to go to this one. So, yes. I will. Another light over this one. But it can't be too much because then it'll be too dark. I'm going to keep going. And I just went a whole nother direction. Trying to keep it smooth. So I just did this one without any um, uh, blending stub because I felt like some people were feeling like the only way they could create was to have a blending stub. So I wanted to make sure that you you understood that for many years I worked without a blending stub. I didn't even know that there that, that thing existed. A tortillion was even a part of. Uh, the world now and I look at it in the a camera because that's what I'm doing right now I'm looking at it I'm going okay that one looks good this one's definitely lighter than that one that one's a little lighter but I'm feeling like I need to get I need to work on this area right here because I don't feel like these three are there's enough change there when I look at it on my paper in front of me it looks fine but through the camera it does not so I am going to add another slight layer just to get my pencil. Also, sometimes I will check and I will get it's kind of a flat edge to my pencil there. I'll get a little flat edge so that I know that I can get a good nice line here without getting too much going here. I'm going to add a little more to this one. Smudger. Go to this one, and of course that's what happens. You have to go from one to the other, and you're going to have to add a little more. Until you're happy. So I'm going to go to that one, and I'm going to smudge it. 
And then I'm going to add a little more to this one. i got to be careful not to get too much on here. All right. I think you should be able to see. Let's see if I can get this right angle so you can see the value. There we go. Should be able to see the variations. And so uh, through the camera, it's not doing as nicely as I'd like. Uh, I do feel like this one could need. I could use some more. I could. I could even add a little to this one. So I could continue to work on this value scale. This is nine values. Um, or you know, really eight values of pencil and one white. Um, you that to me is a lot. And if you can do this, you're doing fantastic. Um, and I think that really comes. That's that's all I want. Um, I do want you to label them: black, then low dark, dark, high dark, mid value, low light, light highlight and white so you will uh, make sure that you um, label them as you do them and uh, that's it I really wish I had made a little small I had written my words a little smaller and I could have made them but I went over and I just went ahead and added and made it a little bigger so you have to do the actual um, drawing part it has to be the two inches. But I made the name just, it comes out a little further, which is fine. So there it is. And then what I have to do is I'm going to spray them. Um, you do want to spray them. That keeps you from kind of smudging them. So the next technique is, um, the, I wish I could get to the center of that too, but I can't. But I'm going to take my little hole punch and I'm going to push it as far as it'll go and make a little hole right in the center of each one of these. And this is how it becomes our tool. Craftsmanship is important to me, so you're going to try to do your best to find center. I'm not measuring it, so I'm just called, I'm doing what is called eyeballing, so it's fairly close. Alrighty, so the, what you're doing with this is this is actually going to be a tool that you're going to use. And you will spray this with a sealant if you if you get a chance to get some sealant that's pretty nice stuff I did go back and play a little bit because I felt like you couldn't quite see it through the camera um, I think now at the right angle here I can give you a better view of it these two still are very close right here but they they are not uh, in in actual reality so there is a difference in them kind of hard to see it all right so what you're going to do is you're going to use this tool and you're going to basically it would be to check a drawing so like say you're looking at a picture and you're drawing it and you want to make sure it's the same so you would take the picture and I don't have the original picture here unfortunately but you would lay there your graphite over it and you can see like if we just deal with the background you can see the holes so as I move this we're getting closer to still you can still see um, uh, that dark dot and then here we're starting to lose the dark dot and this is probably the best one where the dot disappears completely so this one here is the closest to my background and so if I were trying to duplicate it again I would know I need to go to that low dark and then like in the face I would probably find that some of these areas in his cheekbone is between the highlight and the light areas. So there's a little light and then there's a highlight on his cheek and then there's some definite whites on his nose and on the shirt in the eye itself. And so that's what you're doing. You're using it as a tool to actually make it easier for you to um, 
check your values. And if you can do a, uh, a term and Ross value scale, uh, you have done something pretty amazing. And I think you guys can do this. Talk to you later.